everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Crypto Tips. My name is Heidi, and today I have a very special guest, Mr. Les Khan, who is the CEO of the St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Program. Thank you so much for taking your time to, to be with us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure uh, to, to be on your program and also to be able to talk a lot more about the St. Kitts and Nevis program. Yeah, so for those of you who are new to this channel or are new to this idea of obtaining a second citizenship, how how or why you might want to do that, um, I definitely encourage you to check out the links to the videos that I posted down below in the video description where I talk about my own experience of obtaining a second citizenship in St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, and also I've done an interview last year with a lawyer who helped me do so. Um, so if this is something that interests you, uh, sit back and relax and, and take in all the information because today we have some updates to the program and also, uh, yeah, get going right from the source of Mr. Khan here of what the program is all about and uh, how it could benefit you. So yeah, Mr. Khan, for those of you who don't know you or who would be interested, uh, give us a little, little bit about yourself and about this uh, citizenship by investment program for St. Kitts. Absolutely. So um, I have been with the St. Kitts and Nevis program uh, for about five years now, first as a consultant and then as uh, someone who took over the lead in the program. During the last five years, we've gone through five, six years, we've gone through two administrations, which talks to the stability of the program and the, um, and the recognition that it is a desired uh, product for the country. Hmm. St. Kitts and Nevis um, is the oldest program since 1984. Uh, this program was started and all other programs around the world, and many of you may have heard of other programs in Europe and other parts of the Caribbean, um, they have all emanated from this program. So we are very proud to be the first um, citizenship by investment program. And the fact that uh, we are considered a platinum brand because of how we've evolved, how we continue to, to um, create new products and the integrity of our program that we have, been, we have come to be recognized for. Um, there are many reasons why obviously someone will come, will want to get citizenship. And I, I would like to differentiate that in St. Kitts and Nevis, the citizenship program is not a residence program, as we may hear in parts of Europe, which has the golden visa, mm -hmm. um, which are more residence type um, programs. Citizenship um, gives you um, a passport, and this passport allows you to travel to 158 countries visa free and visa upon entry. It's the leading citizenship program in terms of uh, access to different countries in the Carib from the Caribbean. Um, we lead in, in that category. So from that perspective, having a citizenship from St. Kitts and Nevis allows you that flexibility. In your introduction, you talked about um, Plan B. Mm. And I think Plan B is something that has become a, a, a real buzzword these days especially during the COVID times, because many people found themselves stranded in different parts of the world um, because they did not have that ability to travel freely. Obviously, if you had a St. Kitts passport, for example, you could have tra um, traveled to Europe all right, um, very easily. And people found themselves um, not being able to be with their families or go to a uh, location that gave them better medical attention and, 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 um, and facilities that would allow them to recover better. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting in a lot of things here. St. Kitts and Nevis is known as one of, of the best managed COVID countries, one of the top. And, and as a result, um, we are seeing a lot more applications because people now recognize that they can come to St. Kitts and be safe because mm -hmm. of the strategy that the government, Prime Minister Harris and his unity government has been able to put in place to control COVID. 
we've only had 44 cases. All right. Um, so with that, I mean, in the on the island now, um, there is still a mandatory requirement if you travel into the country to um, spend two weeks in quarantine. I just spent two weeks in quarantine again this year after traveling from Europe. Um, but once I'm out of quarantine, the island is a, an island that everybody's having a good time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we welcome everyone, and and I think that's one of the benefits of having a Sim Kids passport. It gives you that flexibility. There are other reasons that you might um, that an individual will may want um, a second passport. One is education for their their families for the children. So they may want to send them to Europe, they may want to send them to other parts of the world where uh, St. Kitts passport will give them that ability to, to go to. Um, obviously, security is another factor. And with, with conflict that is prevalent in a number of countries around the world and different parts of the world, um, a lot of people, high net worth individuals, find themselves um, wanting to safe, uh, provide safety for their families or provide that ability to get to a safe environment. And um, they will seek sec a second passport. And again, St. Kitts and Nevis is that option that they choose. Um, lifestyle changes, you know, you'd want to live in a beautiful place like St. Kitts and with numerous beaches and, and, and great facilities that we have here. Um, so in, in considering retirement plans and, and so forth, you might want to consider that, se that second passport. So those are the main reasons why uh, people um, consider second pa passports. And as a result, St. Kitts and Nevis is the premier uh, citizenship by investment program. As I said, we started in 1984. The number of applications that we've had from around the world, they, they come from different regions, China, uh, the Middle East, all the Middle Eastern countries, uh, Europe, um, Russia, right? And, and now we're seeing an influx of applications coming from, um, from um, Nigeria and other parts of Africa. So, it's it's an evolution, and um, it's up to us in in our program in in this program to continue to provide the clients with the best opportunity for investment. Now, when we talk about investments, we talk about two types of investments in Saint Kitts and Nevis. One is a non-refundable contribution to what we call our sustainable growth fund. Mm. Mm -hmm. And our sustainable growth fund is priced at 150,000 for a single applicant and 195,000 for a family of four. But during this period in time, we have reduced that price to 150,000 for a family of four. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. And we have extended that limited time offer, as we call it, through the end of this year, through December 2021. So this is something that, uh, again, we're seeing a lot of people taking advantage of, um, but I must remind everyone that it's a non-refundable deposit. Mm -hmm. uh, the second option is in our real estate. And in our real estate, this provides us and provides the client with the ability to invest in a project that um, drives, um, the economy in a number of ways. One, it's, it's building of hotels and condominiums that meets the government's um, requirement or mandate to increase tourism. So we're diversifying our economy into tourism. Um, it provides jobs, obviously in construction. And once these hotels are open, um, they are able to employ much more jobs, permanent jobs. Mm -hmm. for um, the, the individuals on the island. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis is, is unique in the sense that it has, I think, four or five branded hotels. It's one of the only islands in the Caribbean that has four or five branded hotels. You know, we have the, the Hilton, the Marriott, the Four Seasons, the Ramada, just to name a few of them. 
So, and then we have a lot of boutique hotels and, and those continue to be um, built. And even during the COVID time, um, we are seeing um, construction uh, continuing on the island. Mm. And um, this, this has, has really uh, continued to um, support the economy in these difficult times. Um, we continue to create new products and um, we've just announced or will be announcing shortly and you might be the first to know um, that uh, we are launching the ability for anyone to sell their private homes on the island. What we saw was that um, a number of individuals basically from America and, and other parts of, or, and Europe um, were asking for villas and houses rather than the condominiums. Mm. So what we've done is we've opened it up as long as that property meets a minimum requirement, a uh, minimum uh, appraised value of 400,000 US dollars. So if it meets that um, mandate, then it can be sold under the CBI program. Okay. And we're, I've already started to see interest. I'm seeing people asking and, and uh, some applications starting to come in on, on this because individuals can now sell their property. But not only that, individuals wanting citizenship, instead of going into a hotel um, investment or the fund, mm -hmm. they now have a home. A villa might be close to the beach, might be, you know, it just gives them that ability to come. So that's one option that we have. Nice. Um, nice. We are also launching, um, and I, I continue to work on this, uh, something that's called the alternative investment option. Um, and what we are doing there is creating the ability to provide investors who may be willing to put in a lump sum of money to do something that meets a government mandate. For example, one that we are now considering is um, middle income homes. So we have a developer who is willing to build middle income homes for the locals, mm -hmm. all right? At a lower mortgage rate than you would get from the banks and so on. Mm -hmm. This meets a mandate from the government, which is to provide affordable housing, all right? So we are, ex we are um, putting that proposal through and then that developer will be able to sell shares in his company under the citizenship program. Oh, so okay. it gives investment investors another opportunity to, um, to get citizenship through that investment, but it's a direct um, impact to the local mm -hmm. because you can see somebody's going to now buy that, take a mortgage on that property, uh, they might rent it for a period of time and it just becomes a much more affordable situation for younger people and individuals at a certain uh, salary level. So that's, that's another option that we have uh, coming out there. Um, but as we, we go forward with our program, we continue to emphasize um, the integrity of the program, all right? The integrity of the program is, is done through the due diligence that we do. And I know you would have gone through due diligence, <laughs> all right? With a lot of questions from my team here. Um, and Jennifer would have gone through the whole process with you. Uh, but that process, is not compromised in anything that we do. Mm. We go through four levels of due diligence. We check with international law enforcement, Interpol, anti-money laundering databases, terrorist financing databases, et cetera. So when you come through our process, our, our system in the unit, uh, we know a lot more about you than, <laughs> than somebody else might. <laughs> and at times we, we, um, we pick up things that, uh, you know, the client will want to know well, how did you pick that up? Well, yes, we have the sources. Mm -hmm. um, so when we grant citizenship, we, we're making sure that 
the individual uh, does not become a ward of the state. They have the financial background. Um, they, they will not become a reputational hazard to the country. Mm. All right. Uh, we stand by our, our citizens and we hope that our citizens will stand behind us. We continue to do um, checks on the individual even after approval. Mm. So there are databases out there that keep checking to see if somebody shows up on, on a sanction list and, and whatever else. Mm. Um, we, we make sure the person is not a security risk to the country and to our international partners. So there's a lot of, of um, controls that we have in vetting the individual to make sure that we get the, the right person. Um, but we also take steps to uh, protect the investor, especially on the real estate market. All right. On the real estate side, we know individuals are investing their money into a real estate project. Um, and over the last two or three years, we've impl implemented regulations that um, continue to protect them. One, the, the biggest regulation uh, that has been implemented and most recently amended to strengthen it is our escrow bill. Mm. And our escrow bill is the only one in all the CBI programs. So we are the only country that, that regulates and has legalized the escrow requirements, which means that a developer must build and construct in order to get his money out of escrow. Okay. Right? In the past, what may have happened uh, would have been that, uh, let's say you, the client, um, put your money into um, the developer, the government got its fees and everything, but your development didn't get complete. Mm. All right. And, and ownership hasn't been transferred the way it should be transferred. Um, so we have taken steps along the way to tighten this. And, and the escrow bill is, is the one way that we felt that we could do this. And now um, every new applicant that comes in under the real estate market, um, would have to f sign an escrow agreement and the escrow agreement uh, has to have a payout schedule based on construction. Okay. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's one of the key things. Um, we continue to evolve in our program. Um, St. Kitts and Nevis is the only program in, in the Caribbean or anywhere that offers an accelerated process, hmm. right? Meaning that we can, guarantee that you will get approval within 45 to 60 days from oh, when wow. the file is submitted into the unit. We are the only program that offers this. And we are able to offer this because we have negotiated with our due diligence companies. We, we um, create a fast track for when that file comes in. We charge extra for it, obviously, because it's getting the personal attention all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, but, but clients who um, wish to, to get this done within a very fast timeline for various reasons, we've seen it. Uh, the reasons out in the Middle East, for example, is that when it's coming into summer, a lot of people in the Middle East want to travel because it's so damn hot. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they may say, oh, let me get my citizenship. And by the way, I really want it before June. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, um, this would be uh, a reason why the accelerated would work or somebody needs to travel for business purposes and they hadn't thought about it before. They realized they can't go to Moscow without, you know, because they have to send their passport to get a visa and it would take a, a while longer. But with St. Kitts passport, you can go into Moscow, you can go into Russia uh, because we have visa free access. Speaking to my own experience of obtaining the second or the citizenship in St. Kitts is obviously the reputation of that program was a huge factor for me on that decision of where my options were. Um, and additionally, you know, if you're invested in cryptocurrency, if you've been doing really well um, investing in, in, you know, you never maybe thought that you even had that opportunity to invest in something like a second citizenship that was absolutely my position as well. And I was all of a sudden um, able to really diversify my life and having a second citizen citizenship in that 
you know, with St. Kitts has allowed me to do much more than I would have in a more free way. With everything that's been happening, again, with the lockdowns and the and the restrictions on travel, a lot of people just assume that the, maybe the passport that they did have would be the end all be all. What would be a benefit of a different citizenship? And exactly what you're saying about traveling, um, having an option if that, you know, if you're living, living on a different side of the world, you're unable to see your family, whatever have whatever happens, and you're in a situation, you're locked down and locked out of a country you want to go to. That's what the plan B is for. And yeah, I think this is a great program. And I'm really glad also to hear about um, the other investment options and the developments that are helping support maybe more the local economy as well with the housing there. I think that's really great. Um, yeah, so Thank you so much for this information. Is there any other uh, information or maybe helpful places that people can go for information like this that you'd well, like to uh, promote? Absolutely. My website is a good source of getting detail about the program and the process. Hmm. On, on my website, you'll find a list of um, service providers, local service providers. You'll also find a list of international marketing agents. Hmm. Now, international marketing agents are those individuals who are outside of St. Kitts and Nevis who market our product. As okay. you would recognize, um, the, the marketing of the product is based on relationships, and uh, relationships are driven by those agents, especially in the Middle East who speak the language and uh, in China, you know, mm -hmm. you have that too. So uh, we had set up an international marketing agent structure that allows individuals to, um, to be able to promote a product and get compensated if they uh, have invested in, in the um, Sustainable Growth Fund. So okay. just to give you an idea, if, some, if somebody's registered as an international marketing agent and they have um, brought in an application under the Sustainable Growth Fund, they get a rebate of fifteen thousand dollars nice us. all right so um you know once you can drive applications in then it it, it um the international marketing agents are the ones who can bring that in and um it's, it's just something that we promote and we allow our international marketing agents to promote our program mm -hmm. within certain guidelines yeah of course, there's always those background checks hanging around, so not just anyone. Can... Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, and a code of ethics uh, that has to be followed by our international marketing agents. Again, we are one of the few people, or if not the only one, that has published international marketing agents on our website. The other thing that we've done on our website, and this just goes to show um, how advanced we are in our program and what we think about. We have what we call a blacklist on our website. And if we um, identify any international agent or agent out there who is promoting our product below certain prices or doing wrongful advertisements and so on, we put them on a blacklist and we say, you can't put any applications into our system. So it's a, a flag to anybody who's looking on our website. Don't go to these people because their integrity is not that great. So we, we do that. Um, whether it hurts us or not, I don't think it does, but it really um, shows that we are serious about our product. We are serious about maintaining our platinum brand. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that's great. I'm really glad that you were able to share that information with us. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will be the first time people are hearing of these updates. I think it's uh, exciting. And I'm glad to hear that it's, you know, you're doing what you can to make it even more accessible to people, especially with families and things. Um, Cause yeah. I think oh yeah. There's one thing I forgot to mention. <laughs> <laughs> As you mentioned families, one of the most recent regulation changes was that we we'll, um, we put in regulation to allow the addition of brothers and sisters, so siblings. Oh, nice. Under the age of 30. Okay. All right. And if they are dependent on the main applicant. Okay. So um, this allows the extended family. Uh, but I must advise that the siblings must come in at the time that the main applicant is being submitted. Okay. Not, not after. We, we don't allow siblings 
um, for files that have already been approved. I see. That's something I will work on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check back next year. See what yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, thank you so much for all this great information. And um, any links that you want to give for people to check out, I can provide in the video description as well. So everyone scroll down a little bit, click on the about information here and learn a lot more. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Khan. It was a pleasure. And uh, I wish you all the best in the future with the with this program. Thank you. It's my pleasure.